Welcome back to Technology Innovation Hub. So it's going to be the second session under Oracle as a long-term career partner. In the first session, we have discussed on how to select a long-term career partner and the importance of selecting a long-term career partner to have a successful career. So in this session, let's continue our discussion. Now, as your career grows, as your career grows, let's say you are an entrant and you now already have spent three years in the industry. So beyond that, you are no longer is going to be an entrant. You are just, you are just jumping the entrant level. So therefore, you need to think about Cross-skilling, upskilling, and reskilling. Three terms. Cross-skilling, upskilling, and reskilling. Because you need to build your competencies. Just having one primary skill. Now, in the last session, I raised the question. If somebody asked from you, what is your primary skill? You are a master of what? And I mentioned you should have answer for that question. Direct answer. You can't say I am uh, this and that and like that. Uh, you can't shake. You should have direct answer. Okay, I am a DevOps master. I am a cloud master. I am a database master. Likewise. Yeah. Now, in the past three years, you may not say you are a master, but you can say I am an expert in database. So, because master, it will take time. At least it should go for seven to eight years, nearly ten years. But you can say I am expert. It's okay. If you are certified, it's well enough. You can say I am expert. And you can, because uh, almost you have three years experience and you have derived at least some basic solutions. Again, there's a question. Because if when you say expert, people expect you to be a professional. That's another question to understand. Because at any level, not even three years, even beyond five, ten years, we have all rounders in the industry. So you have to be very careful. When a critical problem comes in a project environment, a solution given by a all rounder may be a temporary solution, or it's not going to fix the problem. It's around it's a patchwork, temporary you are just you are just temporary giving a solution. It's not it's not going to be a resolution. It's a workaround kind of a thing. Now, workarounds are not long lasting and we can't depend on a workaround for a long time. We need to get the fix. I mean, it's a permanent, should be a permanent fix. In problem solving, we are learning those things. Now, all rounders are not capable of giving the permanent solution or to give a professional advice. That is what we expect. And only a subject matter expert can give that professional advice to the problem how to solve it permanently. That is what is expected in project environment when a critical problem comes. Because client expect a resolution for that, a permanent solution, not a workaround. So therefore, when you say you are expert in the project environment or in the industry, people will expect or the rest of the team will expect for you to give a professional advice. That means you are guaranteeing the completion of tasks you are doing it in the right way and you are doing it in the right time. Within this time, I will do this and it is guaranteed problem will solved. And this is the right way. That's a professional advice. So at any age, uh, let's say beyond three years, if you are telling I am a database expert, then you should be able to guarantee a completion of tasks. Your, your answers, you are responsible for it. It's not workarounds. So be careful. All around is fine, but Advices from all rounders are not going to solve the critical problems in the project environment rather than educate messes. So be careful not to be a all rounder is what? Who is all rounder? All rounder is a person who is aware of everything little by little. He knows everything. Most of the things he knows, but he is not a professional. He knows to hang around little by little. Now, nah, if we do it in this way, it will work. If we do it in this way, it will work. It will work, but there is no guarantee. That's why. So we can't work with all rounders always when it's come to critical problems. We need professionals. So that's why beyond three years, you should start. If we continue our discussion, 
Beyond three years, you should start mastering your second skill. Second skill. Now, you cannot depend on a single skill for a long time. At least, I mean, maximum five years. Then you need to start. This is known as reskilling yourself. Reskilling yourself. The third point. Now, you are a database expert. Now, you, you are starting mastering cloud technologies or DevOps or microservices, software architecture style, containerizations, likewise. You need to understand the major technology. Now, containerization, Kubernetes, those things are comes under DevOps domain. So if you start mastering DevOps, yeah, you can cover everything. Or you can just select a subcomponent like Kubernetes, which is comes under DevOps domain. That is also okay because Kubernetes also has a great industry at the moment. It's one of the most demanding orchestration platforms. So finally, we, what I am telling here, beyond five years, you need to start reskilling and you need to start developing a secondary technology as your primary skill. So first primary skill you already have. After beyond five years, you need to start your second one. Now there are another two terms. This is reskilling a total new technology you are adapting. Reskilling. The other one is cross skilling. Now cross skilling is what? It just you are adapting the adjacent work. That means for example, now you are a database expert. Uh, let's say you are working with databases on premise. Now you, you are gradually adapting to manage a database on cloud. So that is kind of a cross skilling, becoming a TCF resource, adapting another job role, adjacent one. It's not a total new thing, but you are just shaping up your resource, skills and you are just adapting the next level. So that is cross skilling. Upskilling is what? Upskilling is you are just deep diving your knowledge. I mean, you are just, if you are expert, you try to master. Now, for example, in terms of database, currently you are able to manage a standalone database. Standalone database. But you want to manage high availability. I mean, you want to learn about high availability because customer expect you to design a HA environment, maybe to implement in Oracle maximum availability architecture. So that means you need to learn data card, standby, clustering. That's why you are enhancing your current knowledge and, or in the same job role, you are learning new things. You are deep diving into high availability for clustering. Currently, you are managing standalone database, but you are going for real application cluster management likewise. So that is known as upskilling, skilling up in the same job role. So three things, cross-skilling, upskilling, and reskilling. So cross skilling on that T shape because you are just adapting another adjacent task, like I said, uh, the database uh, on premise and on cloud. So these all three has to happen actually in your career. All three has to happen. Cross skill, upskilling, reskilling. So then only it will become a successful career for you. So here it is explained uh, about uh, career pathing as well. So we don't need to go to more details. So career pathing actually, career pathing is just a concept uh, which comes under culture of talent mobility. When you keep on upskilling, cross-skilling and reskilling, what happens is you are automatically, uh, the visibility comes for you because you are a good performer. You are excellent performer in the industry. Extra, you have extraordinary skills. You are a, your visibility, visibility becomes high because you are always giving the right solution for the client. So that's what he says. Now, when the visibility becomes high, you can go up in the ladder in the organization's hierarchy, maybe laterally, maybe vertically. You can go up with promotions, you, you can adapt the next role, horizontally also you can expand yourself and vertically also you can go up the hierarchy. So that is what I mean by uh, movement both laterally and vertically. Again, the culture of talent mobility, exactly. You are a performer anyway because your skill set is high. You are performing in the database, you are performing in the DevOps style, you are performing in the cloud, enterprise solution. You are a total enterprise solution provider. Now, this is explained in here as well in the channel. I think you may remember in channel interaction 2. If you go to that slide, in channel interaction 2, this has been explained in this way. I think you may remember this one. You should have seen this uh, by now because this has been there in the channel long time the competency building this is all about competency building 
cross skilling, upskilling, all will lead to competency building. To identify this skill, you have PD the knowledge. Now we have categorized in the channel 0 to 5, let's say 5 to 10 years, see depending on the seniority of the resources and beyond 10 years. So beyond 10 years, we mentioned those resources must focus on enterprise scale solutions. 5 to 10 years, integrated solutions, then uh, lower than 5 years, POC level component based solutions. So either of these categories, either of these categories should go through cross skill, reskill, and upskilling to build a proper career. And again, there comes another point that is also explained here on uh, that this is actually in the generic portal. In the career, I have given a long term career explanation how to develop a career from prenatal stage, from prenatal, before birth. That is where the career starts. Already these things are proven by researchers, especially Harvard uh, University. They have done many researches on behalf of this. So I have done that one in the generic portal in the channel we can i can show you that video just now this is just a slide now in this slide you can see the career development because it goes into uh, actually uh, this goes into three aspects actually four we have the academic career development we have the professional career development and there comes another one business domain business domain so it is very important because as you go up in the career ladder, let's say beyond five years, you need to start mastering domains. Because there is a, there are a specific terminology now, for example, to give a proper solution is which domain you are going to give the proper solution. Beyond five years, these things matters for you. What is a domain? There are many domains. There are, we have banking domain, we have telco domain, airline industry, shipping industry, insurance domain. Uh, FMCG, a lot of domains are there. Now, each of these domain carries a specific terminology, specific business terminology. They are on language. So, when you try to give a solution for them, you need to understand these terminologies because we need to map. We need to map IT to their information system. Then only we can come up with a proper solution. They are business processes. We need to understand those things. Especially when it comes to enterprise uh, solutions, information technology architecture, IT, I mean the business architecture, information system architecture, everything matters. So we need to map each of these things. So that's why the domain is very important. Business domain, you need to master that one as well. And after that, there is another component I have mentioned here. Even in the uh, PPT, we can you can see that one, the fourth one. Actually, what is the fourth one now that uh, we have? academic, we have uh, professional, the certification, and we have the business domain. The fourth one is, as a part of career, here you can see in the document, as the career further grows, look at the domain expertise, that we already explained. Look at the domain expertise, that you have explained. Also the role play, so that's the important one, the fourth part, role play. Why it is more important? Because I mean, no matter whatever theory master you are, if you haven't played a role in the industry, you cannot have hands-on. That's the thing. Now, if you are a database master, you have to specifically play that role in the industry, in the client environment, and face the challenges and give resolution. Then only you become, you really become a master on it. Now, what I am telling is that you may hold a certification on SEMA, but uh, if you are, okay, now let's say, for example, Let's say there is a person who has a certification on CIMA for economic side, business statistics and all. But he has uh, another certification on IT side as well. Information technology, he has done a master. And currently he is uh, a database architect. Okay, let's say he is, uh, let's say database administrator. He is a database administrator. So he is playing in the industry the DBA role. But suddenly on a discussion, if we try to give expert advice, on economics, if you're trying to become, uh, I mean, if you try to give an expert advice on economics side, just because he's having a CIMA certification, that won't work. That won't work because he doesn't have the industry exposure because he hasn't played that role in the industry. He hasn't done researches in the industry, market researches on the economic side. 
So therefore, that's why the role play is very important. Then when you are really getting the hands-on, you are getting exposed to the real-time, real-world problems, which then you can solution them. So then you you become a master on that. So that's why particular if that particular resource is a DBA resource, so role play is very important. Play your role in the industry. Finally, there are four things now. What are the four things? You can see in again if we go back to the slide. In the channel, we can go back to the slide. In this PPT, we have. So, in this slide, you can see we have academic, professional, and we have business domain. And the last one is the role play. The role play. So, very important. Four things are there. So, all four has to come in hand in hand. Then only you can become. You can develop a better career and you can have a successful career and one more last thing for this session can one vendor support all of these above so that's the thing that's another thing now let's say if you take oracle oracle they have wide range of products more than thousand product i mentioned this one so therefore when you go up in the ladder in your career ladder your secondary mastery skill. I mentioned you need to have after beyond three years, beyond five years, you need to start developing your second mastery skill. Now, if you are looking at DevOps, does Oracle have in DevOps? Yes, they do have. Do they have Kubernetes? Yes, do they have. Yes, they have. They, are, they have their own flavor for Oracle Kubernetes. And do they have Cloud? Yes, they have. So, this is another important thing. Can your vendor, now if you select Oracle as your career partner, Oracle is a giant vendor who can provide you a lifelong career because it will allow you to master other technologies as well. Now what we are looking at as a resource, you need to master the secondary skill. No? So secondary skill, you are going to have cloud. So Oracle, they have cloud. Third skill, DevOps. So Oracle, they have DevOps. So that's it. Next thing you should look at when you select in the uh, your technology provider or your technology partner for your career, whether this career is going to provide me or is going to support me for developing my secondary and third D skills. So that's why initially I mentioned this particular career partner should be more than 20 to 25 years. He should support for you more than 20 to 25 years. It doesn't say that you can attach to another vendor. Yes, but when you select your career partner, your technology partner, think about those things. Apply all of these things and select your career partner, technology partner. There are other giants who can provide, but here we are focusing on Oracle. So Oracle, that's why I mentioned, is a lifelong career partner for a resource in the industry. Uh, great. I think uh, we are almost uh, done in this session. I'll meet you in the next session. So in the next session, we are going to look at Oracle as an organization. And let's see their website and all. And that uh, let's discuss about how Oracle can provide total solution. As a total solution provider, how it's going to play in the industry. And those things uh, we'll discuss uh, in the upcoming session. Fine. Have a great time. Right? Bye. Bye.